Hi, my name is Ryan Verrett, and I'm a product manager at National Instruments for our FPGA for Test products. And today I'd like to show you a demo of spectral monitoring with our new NI PXI Express 5641R Rio IF transceiver. The 5641R is a dual input, dual output intermediate frequency transceiver. Uh, it features a Xilinx Vertex 5 SX95T FPGA, and it's also compatible, compatible with National Instruments 2.7 GHz up and down converters. Each of the IF inputs and outputs has 20 MHz of bandwidth uh, with 14 bits of resolution, and we can hit IF frequencies from 3 to 80 MHz. This product is targeted at applications like software-defined radio, RFID test, inline modulation and demodulation, uh, and spectral monitoring and signal intelligence. So today we're going to be doing a demo of a spectral monitoring system and here's a photograph of the actual system. Uh, we start with a dual core processor, then the FPGA transceiver itself, we have our 2.7 gigahertz RF down converter cabled over to the FPGA transceiver. Uh, we're using one of the analog inputs and then we're sharing a clock between the two. You can see the cables there. And then finally we have a RAID data storage solution from National Instruments which will allow us to record the IF spectrum uh, or the RF spectrum that we're actually analyzing. So going into a little bit more detail, uh, here's the architecture of the system. We start with our 5600 RF down converter. Uh, this is a three-stage super heterodyne down converter, so this is a little bit of a simpli simplification here. But basically, uh, we start with RF, uh, and then we down convert that signal to IF. And the reason we do that is because we can then use an analog to digital converter on our IF transceiver to digitize the data. Uh, the module also has dedicated hardware for digital down conversion which takes the time domain IF data and converts it to real and imaginary or in phase and quadrature uh, IQ data. Uh, on the FPGA of the module uh, we pass that raw IQ data back to the host. Uh, then we also do some windowing and FFT, uh, perform an FFT on the result of that window. And we actually have overlapped windows so that each uh, time domain sample gets appropriate representation in the frequency domain. Uh, we transmit that raw frequency domain data also back to the host, uh, but we also have additional FPGA functions for performing a frequency mask. So point by point for every uh, point in time or point in frequency, uh, we can compare that data in the FPGA to some predetermined mask. And then finally, um, some calculations on the FPGA to do uh, things like max hold so that we can look at the peak of the spectrum for a given period. Then on the host, uh, we primarily use the host for the display capabilities. So we can display the raw frequency, um, also the, the max hold that I just referred to, and then the comparison against the frequency mask, also alerting the user to whenever um, the RF spectrum will exceed that frequency mask. And then finally, we pass the raw IQ data down to our hard drive array. Uh, this is actually an array of four hard disks uh, in a RAID 0 configuration so we can stream very high data rates to it um, and record our RF spectrum. This is a VI that I built and basically what we have here is a real-time spectrum analyzer. Um, you can see we have our target, the 5641R here, and a few different features. So I'll just go ahead and run it. And what we're actually looking at, you can see by our RF frequency, 98 megahertz. This is actually right in the middle of the FM band. Um, and furthermore, you can see our IQ rate and bandwidth. We're, we're acquiring uh, 20 megahertz of RF spectrum right now. And you can see um, our um, persistence display as we start to acquire more and more data. Uh, we can start to see different channels in the RF spectrum. So you can see all of the different FM radio stations in Austin, Texas. And we can play with the persistence and the intensity. So um, you can change the colors to your liking. You can also uh, decrease the persistence so you're seeing a more real-time display. Or you could even turn on infinite persistence so you're basically retaining all of the frequency domain information. 
Um, You'll also notice that uh, we're streaming the data to disk right now. I uh, have it set up to stream up to 20 gigabytes. Uh, just in the time that we've been running in the demo, we've already recorded 6 gigabytes of information. Um, and this is data that we could then go and post-process. Um, if we saw something of interest while we were recording data, we could go back and demodulate a certain band of data. Uh, but we have all 20 megahertz here. Uh, we can decrease our persistence. Um, I also mentioned the max hold feature. If we turn that on, um, we can see uh, a real-time update of the maximum um, since we turned on the max hold feature. And that's good to see if you ever have any um, unanticipated signals that are infrequent in nature. You can basically just turn on the max hold feature and, and wait for that signal to pop up. And then uh, finally, we have the frequency mask comparison. Um, right now, it's just a simple threshold level that's constant across the entire frequency domain, uh, but you could make this uh, threshold or this mask arbitrarily complex to you know, monitor a certain band or to actually um, allow certain bands and prevent others. But you can see here as we get right on the limit, um, we should see the frequency masks start to go on and off. So these are the upper samples up here that are occasionally going above the frequency mask and that's causing us to trigger here. On the FPGA this is implemented in hardware time so you could have for instance a digital trigger output that would trigger some other device or, or cause some other action to happen uh, but it's a very very low latency operation. So again here we've, we've got our entire RF spectrum. Um, if we wanted to zoom in on one of these channels, we can also do that. So I'll go ahead and stop so we can reconfigure our acquisition here. Uh, one of the channels in particular that that's, uh, we receive very well here in Austin, Texas is 100.7 megahertz. Um, also this decimation factor, uh, the analog to digital converter on the 5641R is always running at 100 mega samples per second. Um, the decimation factor um, will determine how much IF bandwidth we actually receive. So if we set the decimation to 128 and we run that, we should see, I'll turn off the max hold and the frequency mask here, um, our IQ rate is 100 mega samples per second divided by 128 or 781.25 kilosamples per second and that results in a bandwidth of about two, um, 625 kilohertz. So that's enough to see one RF, or rather one FM channel. Um, and we've got infinite persistence turned on here. Uh, we can change that to um, non-infinite. Um, and we can vary the intensity a little bit. But basically, as we acquire more and more data, you can start to see here uh, the center of the spectrum. This is your typical analog channel. Uh, but one of the benefits of a persistence display like this is that you also see these very distinct sidebands here. Uh, there's this sharp discontinuity. Uh, and what this is is actually HD radio. Um, it's an OFDM modulated signal and it's digital audio rather than the analog audio that you see in the center of the band here. Um, and you can actually transmit that below the, uh, the frequency mask uh, that the FCC mandates for uh, FM transmission. Um, so they basically, um, in between channels, put in this HD radio, digital radio information. Um, we can do the same maximum hold feature and you could see uh, the difference between the max hold which is what you'd have on a typical spectrum analyzer um, and something that's performing uh, real-time FFTs like the 5641R here uh, is that the uh, max hold doesn't necessarily show you the entire shape it, it isn't as obvious that these, these OFDM bands exist out here at the edge of the spectrum. Uh, we can also do that same frequency mask comparison and you can see here as we get close to our, our data, or rather our um, peak amplitude here, we can start to exceed our frequency mask. And again, this, this frequency mask could be arbitrarily complex. You'll also notice that we're, we're streaming data here to disk, but at a much lower rate, simply because our IQ rate is a lot lower. So that is all I have for you. I want to thank you for watching our demo here today. If you have any questions or would like additional information on the PXI Express 5641R Rio IF transceiver, please visit www.ni.com transceivers.